Welcome back. Look at that beautiful sunshine coming up over the Magic City. Thank you for spending your Tuesday with us. We begin with some breaking news just overnight. The Billings City Council has passed an ordinance they hope will rid the city of sex trafficking businesses. The 8 to 3 vote happened just after midnight. The new ordinance requires all massage providers to obtain a special license and pass a background check. Experts say there are at least 12 illicit sex trafficking businesses in Billings disguised as massage therapy. There were hours of debate before the vote last night. Police Chief Rich St. John says he's for any tool to help victims and bring criminals to justice. But some legitimate massage therapists are against the ordinance saying it unfairly lumps them in with illegal businesses. The ordinance still needs a second reading at a future council meeting before it becomes law. It's based on a law in Aurora, Colorado. Breaking news this morning, the CDC and FDA are recommending the United States pause the use of Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine. It comes after six reported U.S. cases of a rare and severe type of blood clot. All six cases occurred in women ages 18 to 48 and symptoms occurred 6 to 13 days after the one-shot vaccination. The CDC says further review of these cases is needed to assess their potential significance. Also making headlines this morning, protests rage on in Minnesota following the shooting death of 20-year-old Dante Wright, a black man, by police. 40 people have been arrested after two nights of demonstrations, and officials say some police were injured by protesters throwing debris. The officer who shot Wright may have mistaken her pistol for her taser. Investigators released body cam video of the traffic stop, and in it, the officer is heard warning him that she was going to tase him before actually shooting him. Just a few miles away, Derek Chauvin's defense team was asking the court to sequester the jury as he continues to stand trial for the murder of George Floyd last year. They argued jurors could be influenced by Wright's death. The judge denied the request, and another that would have blocked jurors' access to media today the defense will start presenting its case in the trial. Prosecutors wrapped up by calling a cardiologist to the stand who testified Floyd's death was preventable. The UK variant of COVID-19 has been discovered in Park County. Now health officials are concerned it's spreading within their community following a recent uptick in cases among young people. It doesn't actually change our recommendations. It doesn't change the public health um, approach, we may want to think that this is behind us, but this is a very stark warning that it is not. The variant is now the most dominant strain in both the U.S. and Europe. There's a new study confirming that it is 35 percent more transmissible, but researchers now say it is not more severe or deadly than the original strain. This morning, Park County will hold the first vaccination clinic specifically for people 16 to 18 years old at Park High School. Another will take place in Shields Valley next week. You can contact the Park County Health Department for more information. In Helena, a Senate committee has advanced a multi-billion dollar authorizing spending bill of Montana's share of federal COVID relief funding. The final version still has some details to work out. Lawmakers will coordinate it with other spending bills. Right now, it includes hundreds of millions of dollars for infrastructure and money for schools, health care initiatives, and local governments. Democrats, though, unsuccessfully tried to remove a provision saying local governments will have their funding reduced by 20% if they have stricter COVID-related health requirements than the state. It seems... Um absolutely unnecessary and kind of strangely punitive. So those counties that are trying to address their problem, we're going to punish you for how you're trying to address infection rates. And that's certainly not consistent, again, with the overall direction that we're getting from the American Rescue Plan. Meanwhile, three bills to regulate legal recreation marijuana in Montana is still alive. But lawmakers say they should have narrowed it down by Monday. The Senate's new Select Committee on Marijuana Law held its first meeting yesterday. It's their job to narrow it down and select which bill to advance. The chair of the committee says compromises will be made and the final product could be a combination of the bills. The governor's office estimates marijuana sales in Montana could exceed $200 million annually by the third full year. That could mean up to $40 or $50 million a year in revenue for the state. 
A decision in the Montana House on a bill regarding transgender athletes may cost the Cats and Grizz home playoff football games. The NCAA released a statement saying if House Bill 112 is passed, championship events, including FCS playoff games, will not be held here. The bill would block transgender women and girls from participating in competitions designated for female athletes. Yesterday, the House rejected the Senate's amendments to the bill that would have voided the law if the federal government decided it violated federal anti-discrimination rules. The House and Senate will now have to appoint a conference committee to work on a final version of the bill. Montana Democrats are speaking out against their Republican counterparts. Just a day after the state's Supreme Court paused a GOP effort to obtain emails from the judiciary, a new law just passed in the legislature gives Governor Greg Gianforte the power to appoint new judges. It's being challenged in court, and Republicans uncovered an email from one of the judges deciding whether or not it's constitutional, showing he opposed the law. That judge stepped down, but it's prompted GOP leaders to request more emails to see if any other judges expressed similar feelings. They were granted some of those emails, but on Sunday, the Supreme Court stepped in, blocking them from getting more. Democrats say this is an attempt by Republicans who already control the executive and legislative branches to bully the judiciary. They are now going after the judicial branch and trying to get them to do their bidding as well. And I think the public should be concerned when someone is trying to have that amount of control and going after the very body whose job it is to try to be a check and balance. Republican lawmakers say they're just trying to ensure the judiciary is impartial the Montana Supreme Court has ordered arguments on the legality of the entire process. All right, we check in with Miller Robson one last time at the weather board. All right, Casey, thanks a lot and good morning, everyone. Here is the main headline for us. We're staying cooler than average all the way through the rest of the week. By the time we get to the weekend, though, things are looking up as high pressure will take over. We'll be in the 50s Saturday. And we're looking at 60s on Sunday, but today we'll go with variable cloudiness, mostly cloudy tomorrow and then a chance for snow as we get into Thursday and Friday. A nice sunrise across Billings right now. That shot courtesy of the great folks at Stockman Bank and the weather cam. It's chilly out there. A good, what, 10 degrees, almost 10 degrees below average where we should be to start the day. 25 at the airport feels like 17. Humidity's gone down just a bit. 66% dew points at uh, 15. Winds have kicked up just a bit, uh, coming out of the north at about 7 out of the north. Yeah, that flow from the north keeping those temperatures cooler than normal. You can see the snow in the northeast corner of the state. That's where we have that winter weather advisory in effect. A better shot of it here. So take a look at uh, conditions across Montana outside of the northeast corner and just southwest of Billings. Pretty uh, qu uh, quiet start out there. They still got that slug of moisture for Columbus down to south of Pryor down to Fort Smith where uh, and up and down 310, uh, 310 where we have enough snow. That little band right there will make a road slick this morning during your morning commute and also maybe reduce visibility in spots. So just keep that in mind. What's causing all this? Well, we do have this area of low pressure that's off to our northeast. You can see the wraparound flow bringing that colder air in from Canada will continue to blanket the area all the way through at least Friday, but that will slowly start to move away and take the rain snow with it. But we're not done there. We do have another cutoff low down to our south that is projected to slide to the southern portion of Wyoming over the next couple of days. Now it's all about timing and where this thing wants to go. If this area of low pressure goes farther south, we may not see much of an impact on our area here in Yellowstone County. If this holds on to the track that we're looking at right now or even comes farther north, we have a better chance to see some snow Thursday into Friday here in the Magic City. How much snowfall? I've had that question. Uh, different models saying different things. Uh, one model seems to think maybe below an inch. One tries to push us toward two inches. So there's still some uncertainty on that. We'll have to keep an eye on what that area of low pressure wants to do and where it wants to go. But today with the clouds and uh, we're still seeing the snow again up there in the northeast corner of the state. Uh, variable cloudiness otherwise, but you can see those temperatures staying below average today in the 30s and maybe some 40s. So you'll want to keep a coat handy not only today but for the course of the next few days across the state today we're looking at temperatures mainly in the 30s and 40s as well so that cold Canadian air will continue to blanket the state and northern Montana or northern Wyoming rather as well so our high today of 41 that's a good what 16 degrees below average wow we wake up tomorrow morning in the 20s and we we harp on the daytime highs being below average look at those nighttime lows staying below average as well by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, again, depending on what that area of low pressure wants to do, a good chance we'll see some snow Thursday into Friday. 
But here's the payoff. High pressure takes over for the weekend, which so far, Casey, is looking pretty darn good. Yes, it is. I guess if we are going to have two good days, we should have them on Saturday. And Absolutely. Sunday. You work so hard to get to the weekend. Why not give us the payoff and give us a good day? Yeah, Saturday exactly. And Sunday. Yeah. Well, you know, we've only got a couple of seconds left, but what are we doing after this? Well, I mean, we're taking Jacqueline's advice. It's grilled, grilled cheese. cheese. Day. It's grilled cheese. Absolutely. Day. <laughs> Tomato soup. Good weather for it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this Tuesday morning, everybody. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow.